All right, guys. Uh, well, th thanks again for, for jumping in. Um, I wanted to get some coaches together and talk about what's what's affecting our game. You guys are in the trenches. You're, you're helping these kids fulfill their dreams. You know, you guys are doing what I always dreamed about. I always wanted to be a basketball coach. So, you know, I really appreciate what you guys what you guys do. So I figure, you know, before we get started, we'll kind of go around and uh, talk about, you know, what's, first of all, what school you're at, uh, maybe a little bit about your background, where you played, you know, and, and stuff, and how long you've been to school, how your season went, and, and maybe your prospects uh, uh, for last year. I'll, I'll, I'll start. Uh, you know, my name is Julian Brown. I played at Robinson. I played uh, uh, JV at UVA. The only reason why that's relevant is because we played a lot of a lot of prep schools and a lot of uh, uh, Division three schools. So I got a chance to see, you know, expose a lot of different players that were that were playing. Uh, Sherman is going to join us. Um, uh, and at, well, while I was in Charlottesville, I started refereeing basketball. Um, so I've been refereeing, I've refereed from 85 to, to 2000, uh, 2004, which is how I met, uh, Doug, you know, yelling at me at JV games on the bench. He was just fussing the whole game. His team's up 20. I'm like, who was this, this kid? So, and that's, that's how I actually met coach Bentley as well. Uh, he, he wasn't fussing. He was up 10. He was just grandstanding over there. He was just smiling having a good time. But uh, as, as a summer league coach for Robinson, which I did when I was in college, I met Dermia and uh, I, I used to drive him to pre drive him to all the games. And you would think he'd be nice to me. He was the best player on my team. Never listened to a word I said when I, uh, when I was coaching him, you know, the most talented guy I ever coached in all the years I, I, I did it, but I can't, I could never get him to listen to a word I was saying. Uh, but anyway, I, I refereed and, and I, I coached uh, AAU for Nova United, uh, I think I, I think I ran into Tony when I was doing that as well, Coach, Coach Bentley as well. So I, I did with Randy White and Daryl Branch did that until two, about 2002. Uh, and then, you know, I, when I started, my, I had my second child, I gave up officiating. And I really didn't, uh, you know, I really didn't stay involved with basketball. Uh, Doug and I, Coach Jewel and I, were going to watch the state tournament every year, which is where we saw Sherman. We saw Sherman down there, at, uh, you know, doing his thing for Potomac. And we go down every year and watch the Final Four. I guess it was Final Eight at, at some point, but um, but that was my only involvement in basketball. So uh, this year we started the Nobody Legends group, and that was basically I have I've been away from the game in uh, at least seven eight years. Every once in a while, I go watch uh, Coach Jules games or, 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 or Coach Marshall's games, but I really haven't had much involvement. So it's been great getting back in. But one, you know, one thing I realized there's a there's a lot going on with the game now. You know, the game is I don't want to say it's in crisis, but you know, it's high school basketball is not on top like it was a while ago. And then, so I just think there's a lot of things that we can talk about. Maybe, maybe you know, who knows? We're not going to solve all these issues, but we can at least talk about some of these issues that are affecting the game and affecting you guys' uh, you know daily lives. So again, I appreciate you guys doing this. So why don't we, uh, uh, Doug, uh, Coach Jewel, why don't you start and go go next and kind of give us your, your background. Oh, first, uh, Julian, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. The one thing before I was, I was sitting there thinking about the group of guys that you got here tonight, you know, in your, in your little session, me, Tony, Carlos, Durham, and Sherm, is like all of us were coached by amazing people. You know, I, I'm looking at, you know, I'm looking at Tony and Coach Phillips, and then he got, you know, he worked with Bobby. And then I'm talking about Carlos, and Carlos was, you know, with Coach Mitris and then with Coach, with, with Coach Palmer, and then Durham with Coach McKaig, and, you know, then working with Coach Jenkins, and then and Sherm working with, you know, playing for Coach Hayes, and then going on and, and coaching with Keith Honore. That's, you know, so the, the stones that set for us is all through them. So I'm we're lucky to have those guys to teach us the game because we're trying to give back what they were given. But sorry for that quick one, but I was just thinking. No, no, absolutely. Um, but, um, Doug Yule, I went to Chantilly. Tony and I used to have battles in the Potomac District on the freshman JV and the varsity level. And, um, you know, went for, went for Chantilly. I played football in college for a couple of years at Newberry College and then came back and started coaching from a high school basketball coach at, at Lake Braddock. And then from Lake Braddock, I've been at Westfield for 17 years. Um, I was this JV coach for four years for Coach McKeg and then, you know, just been doing it ever since. So there you go. Hello, Coach Bentley. Why don't you go? Why don't you go next, Tony? Uh, well, Doug, I don't have anything like Doug. That was pretty damn good. You remember everybody's <laughs> high school coach, and damn, Doug, make me follow that. But that was really good. But no, I'm uh, Tony Bentley. Uh, 
born and raised in Arlington, Virginia, man, South Arlington. And uh, I played uh, my high school basketball at Washington Lee under Dale Bethel. And then when Dale retired my junior year, John Phillips came in uh, and took over. He was a longtime assistant at Yorktown High School, took over and has been my mentor to this day. Um, we don't miss a week where we don't talk or whatever. That's my guy. Um, but now a movement actually started my coaching career at Washington Lee um, very early in my career and uh, was there for about nine or 10 years. And while I was there, I, I had the privilege uh, to coach under coach John Phillips. And then uh, Bobby Dobson took over the job 93, 94, and he kept me on, which was great. And I stayed with Bobby for uh, nine years um, as uh, the head JV coach. I was freshman head coach and JV head coach and Bobby's assistant coach for all those years. And Bobby uh, is still there because I always wanted to be the head coach at my alma mater. Um, <laughs> Mr. And if I would still be waiting for Bobby to retire, I'd still be his assistant coach all these years. So uh, in 2002, um, something that we thought would never, ever happen is Bob Veldrin. Um, longtime great legend coach at Wakefield stepped down after 31 years. Um, and I remember Bobby and I were sitting in class and we saw it in the Washington Post. That's back when everybody used to read the Washington Post, feel it in the hands, you know? So and yeah. we looked and we saw that Belgian had stepped down or whatever it may be. And I was like, I, I think I'm gonna apply. I'm like, what? Lo and behold, I ended up applying for the job at Wakefield and, and was lucky enough and fortunate enough to uh, get the job at Wakefield back in 2002. Um, and here it is, 2021, and I'm still the head coach at uh, Wakefield High School. Very proud and very honored to, to be the coach at Wakefield High School. So that's where I'm at to this day. I haven't left Arlington. have never coached in Fairfax, Loudoun. I've always been an Arlington guy with uh, WNL and Wakefield. I don't think I'll be at Yorktown anytime soon, but I uh, hope to retire at Wakefield. <laughs> but, you're, but you're willing to use uh, Carlos's players this summer. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. so, so, Coach Boyd, next. Why don't you go next, buddy? All right. Uh, born and raised in Alexandria, Virginia. Uh, graduated from Hayfield in 99. Went on to Potomac State. Uh, junior, I played junior college for a couple of years, then graduated from Virginia State. And then, like, uh, once I got home from uh, from school, I basically was, like, doing, like, summer league coaching uh, with uh, under da David Bella. And, and uh, he, he took on the job. He was, he was, like, the coach for, like, two years over there. Um, and when he got the job, he basically was, like, uh, come over and be the JV coach. So I did the JV coach thing for a couple of years. Um, no, actually for one year. And then um, and then Palmer ended up getting the job after that brother left for like the next, what, six years maybe. And, you know, Palmer comes highly decorated from uh, from from California. It was like, I don't even know how many wins he has, but he's like a, a legend in California. And then he came over here and did an excellent job over, over at Hayfield as well. Um, then he ended up retiring and I was fortunate enough to, to get the job at Hayfield. And I've been at Hayfield ever since, just trying to, build a good successful program like the rest of these guys have. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank, thanks coach. Uh, how about, uh, uh, coach Rivers? Why don't you go, why don't you go next, buddy? All right. My bad guys I'm popping in a little bit late, man. Bath time ran a little bit long with the three-year-olds. So if you see somebody, if you see somebody, man, here he is right here. If you see somebody walking in and crawling on my back at some point, and you know why, y'all? For those y'all that seen it before, you know it's going to happen sooner or later. Um, no, we're just we're just glad you can make it, buddy. Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, I'm not like everybody else. I feel like I didn't grow up in Virginia my whole life. My dad was an army guy, so I was an army brat. And didn't move to the um, North Virginia area until I was in the seventh grade. So at that point, I was we moved to Woodbridge, and it's it's funny we didn't move to any of the other areas. My dad chose Prince William County because you could actually play middle school sports. So it, it's very interesting. I probably would have ended up at one of those other schools if it wasn't for that up farther north, closer to he's working at the Pentagon at that point. So uh, moved down here, uh, obviously played at Potomac High School for Kendall Hayes. Uh, you know, I still, to this day, other than my father, of course, I say that he's the best coach I ever played for, even yeah. moving on playing and at William and Mary and then playing professionally overseas for seven years. But, you know, played there. Had some success. Obviously, um, Los probably don't want to talk about it too much, but we were able to knock them out of the state tournament one year, so that was always <laughs> enjoyable. <laughs> uh, you know, so 
And I, like me and him being the young guys, I also graduated in 1999, went on, played away Wayne Mary, graduated 2003, played overseas for seven years. So then came back. Uh, Keith, you know, was fortunate enough for him to let me come on the staff when I was still trying to figure out if I was done playing or not. And he, he said, well, why are you home? Just come help us out. And the next thing you know, I went from just helping him out to sitting on the bench <laughs> to um, coaching the JV team the next year. Uh, left there for a, a year, went coaching University of Mount Olive. Figured out I didn't want anything to do with that college stuff. Came back. <laughs> um, were able to win a couple state championships with Keith there. And then 2016-17 season was my first year at Patriot High School as a head coach. Hey, uh, Coach Rivers, where, where, where is Patriot? What, where is, is it? Uh, it's in Prince William. What, what it's, it's, it's in Prince William. It's in Noakesville. And I say that acting like I would have known where it was if I didn't work there. But it's, <laughs> if I had to tell you, I would say it's out near Manassas. Let's just say that. Yeah, yeah, so um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's it. I remember the first time I drove out there, I was actually going out there to watch Potomac play a football game when I was working there. And I remember thinking, like, man, where am I going? It is dark, it's trees, and then you come out into this big, huge campus uh, of a school. And you know, it's it's been great. You know, obviously, the first year we were just trying to turn around a program that had been, I, I'm gonna say historically, but it only been open since 2011, had been pretty bad been a doormat so we had our work cut out for us and last few years we've been pretty successful so great awesome let me uh let me unmute you Durham. uh yeah <laughs> you might want to leave him on mute for a little bit right? <laughs> i'll start talking crazy in here <laughs> hey, hey Durham, I, i'm trying to unmute I'm, I'm trying to unmute you can you can you uh uh hey, hey hello <laughs> yeah. so Jeremy, why, why don't you go next, buddy? Well, first of all, I'm not crazy, Sherman. I, just say, <laughs> shit. I say shit that y'all afraid to say, and I'm not politically correct, so it's okay. But, you know, somebody got to be that guy. I don't mind being that guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you always look like that. Hey, so right. I'm yeah. going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna be me no matter what. That's how I got where I am, being me. I mm -hmm. ain't never played the game. But I'm going to go ahead and start off that uh, I've been truly blessed, as Doug, you will say, to have great guys around me. And uh, I will say that Julian came into my life at a time where a lot of things were going on and I was a really good athlete and my uh, stepmother was dying and my dad was working a lot. And, you know, my brothers were in college and doing their thing. And um, I was really good and I was just having fun and I could have stayed focused. Uh, I went to junior college, played in the National JUCO Championships at Montgomery College. Um, decided I wanted to leave. Went down to UVA Wise, it used to be Clint's Valley College, stayed down there for two years. Uh, learned a lot of things about life down there that, um, you know, that being in Northern Virginia, you would never face. Um, when I came back, um, the people at Robinson decided that uh, I had to do something. So um, I decided to go coach over at Marshall High School under a guy named Joe Jennifer, uh, coaching yeah. under Joe Jennifer. Uh, we had a great time. Joe Jennifer comes from Curl and under the background of John Thompson. So I was able to get in that click a little bit, knowing some guys in there. And I did a really good job over there. And then um, Joe decided that he didn't want to coach anymore. And I went over and joined the staff over at Paula Six with Coach Jenkins, who I had been working for for summers, for years, uh, basketball camps. That's pretty much the only job I really had in the summers was working with him. And I learned a lot under Coach Jenkins. And he lived in my neighborhood. So it was a fit. Um, from there, I just worked and did a lot of stuff with Woodson basketball over the years. And uh, coaching over at Woodson, um, I decided for two years to go with Kevin McClinton over to St. Stephen, St. Agnes. And I tell you what, that was a great experience. Uh, we won a lot of games, him and I, together while we was there. And um, as you guys know, Doug Craig got the job at uh, Woodson High School and I was working there. And they all left Doug. You know, we always laughed. The whole coaching tree of Mike Flugrap all decided to go to South County. And um, Doug and I used to talk every day. And um, I told Doug that I would come on and help him out um, uh, for a year or two to, to get him started. Um, as I met Sherman years ago when Sherman was a player, I used to work for one-on-one. -on -one, and I used to be the uh, Nan, what the Nan Nectar, the Nan Nectors or whatever, coach for them for a couple games. I coached a couple games and then, uh, it became one-on-one -on -one All Stars. I coached six or seven games with them, and then from there, I met some good people, and I got to go coach in the uh, Portsmouth Invitationals with Arthur Jackson. 
And uh, Arthur and I have been working together now for about 22 years. Um, from there, Woodson had a great run. Uh, I think Tony Bentley uh, beating them, coming down from 21 down, uh, helped me get a job at West Springfield. Uh, <laughs> at the time, the principal uh, kind of recognized that uh, I was very instrumental in that comeback. So, uh, and here I am at West Springfield doing what I love and, uh, and I enjoy it. And uh, I want to say this to you guys, Julian, I did listen to you. I don't appreciate you always saying I didn't listen to you. You know, guys, Julian would say that, but it was only because we would play full court one-on-one. -on -one and I said, if you can't beat me, why should I listen to you? Exactly. It's, it's, it's hard to coach people when, when they're your good friend. You know, and, and when, they can, when they can beat you, you know, they don't, they don't listen to you. Dur Dermy's right, because he, he didn't listen to me. Uh, but I, well, Dermot, thank, thanks for doing this, and I, I'm, I'm proud of the great job you've done at West Springfield. I mean, you, you know, you, you've won one of those kids where you're such a natural athlete. I never thought you'd be a coach because most times the coach is the guy, the more cerebral player, and you're a very smart guy. But you were just like the best athlete on the on the floor. So sometimes guys like that, they don't become the coach because you know the game came easy to them. So I'm so proud of how you how you've done at West West Springfield. So guys, I think we. I want to start off first with talking a little bit about COVID. Um, uh, are, there, are there lessons that we've learned during COVID that maybe there are things that we can do that maybe less is more? Did, did you guys, are there any positives from this season? Was it a shortened season? The things that you can take in the next year? Or is it, was this season kind of, besides Co Coach Poindex who knocked it out of the park and, and Coach Rivers who knocked it out of the park, is this kind of a, kind of a wash and there was nothing to be learned? Who, who wants to go first? Uh, I, mean, I, I can. I, mean, yeah, I don't sure. know. If it's fine. I, I, I don't think it was a wash. I think that any time that we were able to, to have some time and to help kids and them being able to play, obviously, is a positive. It's clearly not the way we would have looked at it because we didn't get all the offseason work. You know, I know most of us, not all of us, play in the um, in, in Tony's fall league, you know what I'm saying, for the most part. So that obviously was not a normal thing for us not to be able to do that stop. Sorry. Um, so, uh, you know, it's so it, it wasn't normal in that sense. And maybe some of the development doesn't happen as much if we were under normal circumstances where we can actually work with them. Um, but, you know, it it's it's so crazy to think that we can talk about a lot of this, you know, un, some of play 15 some odd games and look at it like, man, we didn't really have a season. But, you know, it's it's better than zero. So. If the one thing I hope to I hope that some coaches come from get from it and maybe not because be honest with you if they're not figuring out I hope they don't figure out anytime soon is that you don't have to practice over two hours to get yourself right. <laughs> I remember when I was in college, you know, and and if my college coach ever sees this, I really don't care because it is <laughs> <laughs> the guy that recruited me two way Mary retired, so I ended up playing for somebody else, and he came in. And we used to practice for like two and a half hours. We'd watch film after that for like 45 minutes to an hour. And I remember thinking like, if I ever become a coach, I am not going to do this. And, you know, I was a person that didn't practice longer than an hour, 45 minutes anyway. And I don't know about you all, but we weren't allowed to practice past an hour and a half in Prince William County. Because we, they, they, we yeah. had to get the gyms yeah. ready for the next team to come in and clean and everything else. So, you know, hopefully a lot of coaches – have learned to be more strategic in their planning and practices and their situations. That's the one thing I hope that everybody takes from, because I know there was times like, man, we can't get to this. And it's like, it is what it is. <laughs> you know, we we got we to gotta do what we got to do. And it really, as far as just like persevering and, and making the best out of situations. So I hope the kids got that from it, from their standpoint. And then from us just being efficient in our time and how we use it. Yeah. Okay, I'm. I like to go second. As chairman, I like the fact that you mentioned that because that was. I, I felt like that was the most important thing that I learned. Uh, the clock time management mm. with practice. Uh, but what I got out of COVID is the fact that not being able to do all the stuff that we normally do, playing in Tony's Fall League, and uh, you know, doing some um, individual work. You know, Green Days, what they call it. I don't know what they call it in Prince William, but we call it Green Days. It's just well, called I, the, normal, the normal Wednesday. <laughs> normal Wednesday. Yeah, you know. So, you know, everything's got, everything in Fairfax County has got a lot of rules to it. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I would say COVID did, it, it was able for me to get to know the players. 
mm. in a different way because I was just checking on the kids mentally because they weren't able to do anything. You know, yeah. a lot of kids had a lot of different things. A lot of parents were nervous and, and afraid. And then, you know, some of the parents, you know, end up catching COVID. And we just, you know, as a basketball program, we try to support those parents as they went through that. And then you got to meet the kids. You got to know the kids. You got to know the families. And I think that that's what's missing. Um, you know, last year I had a Father's Day cookout for all the guys, all the fathers, the kids play in my program. And that was really a success. And I think everybody enjoyed it. I think it was good for fathers to meet other fathers and just have fathers around because at this time, a lot of guys, a lot of kids don't have fathers and are looking for father figures. And the fact that we all came together and then we kind of just was able to help those who didn't have fathers and help the mothers, it just made more of a family uh, culture. And that's what I enjoyed about it. And then it just brought everyone together. And I felt like some of our success this year, it was because of that. You know, we really couldn't get in the gym and do a lot of things. And then, you know, parents were getting together, you know, getting kids opportunities to go to the gym where they had, a, you know, a bubble where four or five kids would go work out with one another. And I thought that was great. And I think that that's what was missing. You know, the kids were talking to one another, communicating. And I think, you know, COVID just helped that a lot. And it also helped me with the time to be able to go back and reflect some of the things that I was doing that I wanted to change. And uh, I think it just made me a better coach moving forward. That's great. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. I, I'll go uh, yeah. Sure. So, uh, so on, on my side, and like what we did over here, like the, the best thing that happened for us was COVID. Like for my players as individuals, like, they really like the guys because we had we didn't have the success as far as wins um, the year before. Even though we we went far in the playoffs, but like as far as like the the type of success that we've been norm, normally having, we didn't have. And like my guys were really really hungry to get better. And like COVID is like the, was the best thing. It slowed everybody down. It got some of the guys that you know who had nagging injuries. They were able to get really healthy. And like and my guys, they were they were in the gym all from April to, to September, they were in the gym working out with guys. And like my guy, like a lot of my players got a hell of a lot better. And, and it made us be a more piece of things once we started up because for one, like they were working out together. Like it was like three or four of them, like they would work out together every single day. And then I had a couple worked out with some different trainers, um, like in DC with some other guys. But for the most part, all my guys was working out and playing less games. And to me, that that was like a big a big reason why I felt like our team was was good, and how our, how much our guys leveled up uh, from last year to this year. Uh, you, I mean, you talk about a kid named like Braylon Wheeler, who who he, he's a foot, he's a football first guy, but he was able to lock in in the gym from April to September, and basically push through all the way to to the season with no football to uh, to get in the way. And he ended up being one of the best players in the whole region, which mm. so like to me that was like one of the saving graces for us is that my yeah. best player was able to really lock in for like six to eight months and and become who he is right now. That's awesome. How about you, Coach, Coach Bentley? Yeah, I mean everybody's got a different story. I mean, I think for us, you know, COVID helped and hurt. Uh, not having that skill work. And to me, what's been, been a success for Wakefield basketball is team camp. You know, we take these kids away out of town and they go stay in a college dormitory for a week. And yeah, that's, awesome. that, that's where the bonding becomes. And we didn't yeah. have that. You know, we didn't, we didn't have spring. We didn't have summer. We didn't have team camp. And of course, we didn't have fall league. And then you have to understand what the uh, VHSL was doing was at first football season was on. So my guys, I had, you know, seven or eight football guys. They were all preparing for football. Then they shut it down. Now they had to get their mindset for basketball. So it just became a little different for everybody. And me being almost 20 years at Wakefield, you know, set in my ways, you know, like Sherman said, it was able, it was for me, I slowed down because there's there's three things in life, death, taxes, and Bentley's going to practice. That's what it's always been. But this year I was like, hey, you know, we can't we can't get a gym on Saturday because Wakefield said we're not paying the custodian to come in on Saturday. We got to save money. So we couldn't practice. And at first I was going crazy 
about, wait, what do you mean? So I had to adjust myself from being an old school guy. And I think it did help me maybe put a couple of months on my career because I wasn't so stressed out about not practicing. And then the kids came to ready to play. And then, you know, with COVID, you have to make sure that everything dot your I's and cross your T's. And we felt like we did that, but you couldn't control somebody else's program. So when someone else got COVID, it shut us down for 14 days and we couldn't do anything. Yeah. And, you know, it yeah. felt like that, that, that kind of hurt. And, you know, we may not have the means to like Carlos has kids working out over in the city or doing whatever. We, we didn't have that, you know? So uh, I think COVID helped some programs, definitely crushed a lot of programs. But I think for us on this panel, I think it's definitely changed. And I, I will say this one thing, is that I was happy about is the filming. Freshman, JV, and varsity now, games are streamed. You know, so, you know, think about that as a freshman kid, you get to go home and watch your game. I don't know how many freshman mm -hmm. teams record their games and things like that, but, you know, parents who, that four o'clock game that just can't get to that four o'clock game, well now can see their kid play on stream and sitting at, their, at work on a desk. So I think that's changed the game where now I hope they continue to, to stream the games and things like that so guys can see. And plus, you know what? There's so many guys that uh, secretly behind your back get your film anyway. Well, you know what? Now just go on YouTube and just watch it. And it's and out there, yeah. All you want to do. So ain't no more secretive. This buddy know this buddy. I'm going to give it to you. Don't, don't say nothing. Now all the games on YouTube, man. Go on, do what you do anyway. So yeah. anyway, I think it helped. I think it hurt. But uh, like you said, happy to be playing against. But Someone like me who's used to playing 25 to 30 games only got 10 in. Like we talked right. about before we started, it wasn't a season, but it was a season because the mental health of these mm -hmm. kids, man, it was something that was needed. And not just the kids, man. I don't think – coaches, man, I needed to be in that gym too. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to be in that gym. Trust, like, they trust them. And, and I wasn't looking for a championship. I mean, mm -hmm. I was looking for my kids. You know, we had – I know you can talk, but we had something at the school where they was picking up their books – and, and I hadn't seen my guys in six months. Mm. And, and I walked up and I seen my guys and I just slapped them on the butt and said, good play. Cause I wanted to get back into coaching. <laughs> you know, I had seen my guys and they laughed and it, you know, we weren't supposed to touch and hug, but right, yeah. these are my guys, man. So it, yeah. I was very happy to be just back in the, in the gym with the guys and for my mental as well as their mental. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's great. How about you guys, Coach Joel? I think I'm very similar to Tony, um, you know, yeah. I, my basketball program is much different than I think theirs because, you know, Westfield got five state titles in football in, in 21 years. They got 19 district championships. In years. So, you know, um, for me, it was the things that I got from it. You know, um, kids got outside and played for the first time in a long time because they couldn't get in the gym. I don't know about how it is in, in Arlington and, and Noakesville. I'm going to say Gainesville. <laughs> I mean, like, Kids don't play outside anymore. They ain't no not aways and this like if they if they ain't in the gym because you know the wind took this. They don't play. I right. <laughs> outside and play, yeah. and which was nice. Um, they did organize a lot of games and things like that. So that was that was really good. Um, our basketball program is built off hard work and preparation, and you know we're gonna try to get it done on the defensive end every night. And it was hard. we had to change our way of preparing. You know, and that was probably the biggest difference. Like, um, we're going home and on Schoology, we watching film from home instead of watching film together, which was different. I actually, it actually saved time, which was really, really good. I could go home and, you know, cut it up and they, they eating dinner and watching film, which is, you know, something better. That, that's something new that I think I can do in the future. Um, but it was, it was good. I mean, we've struggled the last couple of years and, you know, we were extremely young. We only had one senior. I think we're going to be back on the path of where we need to get. Um, so I think that this season being small with only one senior was a great way for these young kids to get beat up a little bit, but also learn a little bit and be more prepared because they're, you know, teams weren't as, as good on a scouting as they were. It's really more of working on your team this year than it was preparing for somebody else. Right. And so yeah, that's true. And so that right there in itself, we could make some mistakes as a young team and get away from it because they weren't as prepared for what we were doing. They were more worried about they yeah. self. And so I think that all in all, it was a you know, did we have the wins that we wanted to win? No. 
But at the same time, I think that our kids got better. Um, it was mentally good for them. Um, and, and also, this, this may sound crazy, when you have a team that struggled a little bit with no parents in there to yell and scream, was a beautiful thing. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hey, listen. I didn't want to be the first one. <laughs> okay, but Amen. Amen. This, no parent to look in the stands. They make a mistake, and they looking in the stands for for mom or dad's approval. None of that. And so, and and that was great. And I think that it will it help them look to more focus on the coach than ever before. Because you know, and don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm watching Duke play. And them fools with no fans is no good, and I like it. They just, <laughs> I'm not being mean. Fans <laughs> matter, man. Yeah. So it changed the outcome of games. It really Amen. did. Amen. So, yeah. Any time that you get the opportunity to work with kids, which all of us love to do, you know, is what it's really all about. And that's we do it because of that. So uh, no season, no whatever. We we just got to get it done. So I appreciate it. Well, you know, that's great, guys. I think just like our kids have improved and learned things about themselves online class, you guys definitely brought up some good ideas about how you can improve your coaching, you know, and, you know, you, know, you can do some th things at home online. You can you get video. So I think it's great that you guys have found ways to improve for next year. Um, Dermy and I went to, went to high school with uh, uh, Justin Gazemka, and his son, Chris Gazemka, uh, was a player of the year in the region and won the state tournament. And, you know, we've been talking about this on Facebook, all of us. You know, he doesn't have a Division One scholarship now, which is, you know, when I was, I was 84 at Robinson, there were eight Division One players in, in our in our 16 district. Uh, I was talking to Coach Hayes the other day, you know, when Sherman played for him, there were times in Sherman, they had three Division One players on the floor at one time. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and it, the game has really changed. And, um, I just want to get your guys' idea. Is is this all a bad thing? Are there are there things that we can do? Are there things that coaches can do to keep these kids in the school? Or, or 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 has that ship sailed? And this is just kind of the way it is. The way it is now. This is what we have to deal with. I I, I want to jump in because I want to get you all's feedback because I was gone for a good amount of time from. You know, like I said, being away at school and being out of the country till basically 2010. So I didn't see the progression from kids being in public school to being in private school. You know, I was just, it's so funny because I remember it like it was yesterday that I was asked, and I'm not going to say the school that asked me when I was at Potomac, why don't you come play at this private school? And, you know, it was a good private school. And I was like, you know, I don't, why? I remember saying that. I said, why would I do that? I said, we go, we're, we're probably going to compete for the state championship every year. I said, our open gyms have five to seven guys that can play the D1 level. I just don't see the point in coming there. I said, and all my friends go to school here. I said, so wh what am I going to do that for? And it's funny because another kid on our team, it's, it's so crazy to think about it. Cause I watched an interview with coach A's and, I know he was telling you that story about the last time he dunked. He conveniently left out that he almost separated his shoulder when he was doing that. So well, I hope he sees this and he laughs about that. But because I was there when it happened. <laughs> it wasn't was the last time he tried. It was. <laughs> right. So um, it, it's a kid on, on those teams that, you know, was on our teams and he wasn't playing. A kid named John Alexander. I don't know if y'all remember John or not. I coached him. Okay, I thought so. So John was played for us, and I say play, and I use that term loosely because he didn't get on the floor. Nope. And so John one day said, I'm going to go to Paul's Six. I said, I don't even know where that's at. <laughs> I, said, I said, where is that? He said, yeah, I'm going to go play for this guy. And we were like, man, what you leaving for? Now, good for him. It worked. This was 99. He goes there. He ends up being a Division One guard after not being able to touch the floor for us wow. and, and, and has a, a good college career. So I, I know that's not how it kind of started, but it's like you said, it was some point where kids started to look at it and maybe it was around, if I had to guess, maybe it was around the time of Kendall Marshall, maybe. But I'm just no. talking about that down close, here. Because I, I, can't, I can't speak for y'all because y'all are schools of this. So they probably got y'all more. 
You know what I'm saying? But as far as like down in the Prince William County area, um, I know there was a uh, Kendall Marshall was a kid that I think should have been at Potomac. Danny Sumner that had played at Weaver Mary was another kid that should have been at Potomac. Mm -hmm. Um uh and there's a there's a few more that I could go down the list, but I just remember playing games and we would play against Woodbridge, and there were like three or four guys that were being recruited by D1 schools. And now I can't even get some of those guys to come watch anything. <laughs> and and listen, it's it's I see both sides of it. Are these kids as talented to go there? I don't know. And I just I, I just want one kid from public school to kind of blow up like that so these coaches can start coming back and watching us and not having the kids and the parents and the coaches think, well, there's not enough talent in the public schools for kids for us to make that worth our time. And I talked to Anthony Mills at Colonial Forge all the time. He's another Tony graduate um, coaching there. And I said, man, we got to figure out something. I said, because I remember when I was in high school, Coach Hayes and Coach Robinson ran the exposure camp. And, you know, Metro South wasn't in the spring. It was in the summertime. And there was an all-star game. And, and, and coaches would be in there all the time from all different places. And I'm like, did, did coaches get lazy or did, or just, it was just something that just happened. And that's why I said, I want y'all input. Cause I, I really, I don't know. Cause I didn't get to witness it. Okay. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to step in because I feel like I have a lot of experience at that time because I was at Paula Six. Uh, I went to the meetings for Coach Jenkins when uh, you want to say the transformation of kids going to uh, private schools. Um, uh, like Keith, Bogans, uh, okay, Keith Bogans was the uh, the main guy from the area that kind of started going. Keith Bogans went to DeMath and so did um, uh, what was the other guy's name? Uh, God, I can't Joe, think of his name. Joe Forte? No, Joe Forte, but he Forte. went from Virginia. He went from Virginia. Uh, so I'm just talking about Virginia. I'm just talking about Virginia. Our, you know, us getting John was a, a blessing for us. Uh, we also got Rob Little. Uh, I guess you guys don't know who Rob Little. He don't want to play at Stanford. Ron Ginyer is another kid from down yes, there. Yes, Ron, Ron, Ron is Ginyer. another one played AU with us. I, I remember Ron went, but that, like I said, that was something that was weird for those kids to go and not okay, play. Okay, so, so we had, so I was a part of that program when those guys came. So we end up, we got Ron Ginyan, Andre Eason, John Alexandra, Joel Dempsey from Centerville, and James Stewart from Hayfield. That all was those like 0 guys, 3 or 4. Yeah, but it started before that. It started a year before that. James came afterwards. So all those guys came to play for us at PVI. Um, uh, it was great. Uh, John didn't play. I went down to the Metro South. It's funny that you said that. Uh, we went down into the Summer League, and, the, and uh, Brian Hill and myself went down there and we watched John. And um, Coach was like, we need a point guard. And John was our guy. And Coach, you know, does a great job of developing players, point guards. You know, Greg was his last real successful point guard that he had before he uh, pretty much retired. With that being said, I coached at Woodson when we had a lot of good players at Woodson. I think for eight years, we had a string of really good players. And PBI and Bishop Arrington, we lost kids everywhere. And Tony knows that we played. Um, we lost a kid to St. James. We lost a kid to BI. We lost a kid to PBI who can't end up coming back to play for us. Uh, one kid that we kept was Max Lennox. Um, this is when the AAU influence came. So now I'm going to go back and talk about the AAU influence. So I didn't know anything about AAU until we got to John Alexander. And we got Rob Little. And I got to be around, at that time, D.C. Assault. And I uh, got to see how things went about. And that's where the transformation came. Our kids can play against those guys. But the fact is... Now, the, kids, the kids now can play, you're saying? The kids, the, now? The kids now can play. I think, I think our coaching is way better. I think, you know, all the guys on this panel can coach. You know, and they, they, they proved it. Um, and when we play those guys, when I was at Woodson, we played O'Connor. We played Episcopal. We played St. John's. We, we played be, people. Yeah, we beat Good Council a couple years ago. Okay. I so we played, and we played yeah. those guys. 
So when I want to tell you that we went over there with Joy Wooten and Kendall Marshall and Eric Bowles was a freshman, I want to tell you it was a five-point game with four minutes left when the WCAC official was like, hell no, we couldn't get a call for the next two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's real talk. Like, it, we was giving them the business. And then the next thing you know, the kids were getting discouraged because we couldn't get a call. You know, so, yeah. you know, we were giving them. And I can tell you right now, uh, Piscopal, we, 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 we was kicking them. They had this kid, Doug Chappelle from Mount Vernon, who ended up going to, I think he go to uh, Ryder or one of those places, one of those schools up there. Uh, Jimmy, and then he had Keith and Savage was from Centerville. Um, I mean, said Tilly. Chantilly. We, we was whipping them. What's him? We were whipping them. And, uh, and this kid was, you know, he was a reclass. And I think that's where it all just took off. Realizing right then the opportunity to reclass changed everything. And, you know, you guys want to talk about the reclass. That's where it really changed. The, those schools were being able to reclass. And I'm going to tell you, I was on a coaching staff where me and the guy, we argued all the time because he took a kid that I felt like he shouldn't have never took. But that kid felt like he wanted to go to this school, and I'm not going to say any names, but Tony Bentley knows what I'm talking about. And I don't think he should have went there. But I think the system that he left made him the player who he was. But he thought the grass was greener playing in the other system and getting different opportunities. And now the one thing I will say that I was privy to, that he thought that he was a college player and that he wanted to play with the shot clock. So that's another part of it that, you know, that we lose out on. Because I don't know if you guys know, I've always played a game where we play with the shot clock. And we play bullets yeah. two years in a row, and they beat us by five and six points. So my kids go over there and battle. And it was a great experience to play with the shot clock. So, Sherman, when you talk about that, those are the things that those coaches are putting out there to the kids. Okay. And, and, and I will say this, us not being able to work with the kids, you know, they can't, that's what the green day comes about. But, you know, those guys are able to work with the kids. They're able to get in the gym and do and work with them. I think it's crazy that I can't work with any of my kids one-on-one. I mean, that's I, I agree with that. And our rules aren't the same as y'all. So we can do a little obviously more than y'all can, I feel like. Um, you know, it just I mean, I and I'm Doug, I know that you you got the guy that's at Richmond now. What's it, Blake Francis is his name? You couldn't get anybody to t pay attention to that kid. And like that, that's the type of stuff that I'm talking about. I I clearly know that there if a kid can play at a level or not. And I and I I get mad at other coaches for lying to college coaches about the level of their kids. It actually hurts us all at the end of the day. Yes. So I, the problem is, is that you have a kid like that who goes off, who finally gets an, an offer, plays, becomes freshman year, transfer to Richmond, and ends up being one of their better players. And you couldn't get anybody to listen to you about that kid just because he was at a public school. You had a kid. He, who's a kid you had that left and went to Flint to Flint Hill? Uh, another Jordan, kid, Jordan Harrison. Right, Harrison. right. So this and so it, it just you know I see stuff like that and I'm like and, and Durham, you talked about the the reclass part. You can't reclass at WCAC schools, correct? Am I mistaken in that? You are correct. You're correct. So about you got to do it. Before, you got to do it in eighth grade. Right. Yeah, they but it. so it's 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 something where I mean the last like three years we've lost a kid to a private school. And I, I knew it was going to happen. I said, we start winning some games, these kids ain't going to stay. I said, just the nature of the beast, you know, because I see it everywhere else. You know, like I said, I I'm, I really wanted to be in this when you brought this to us, Julian, to, to really figure out and obviously talk about whatever else we were talking about. What can we do to either slow it? Because we're not going to stop. It's going to keep happening. Yeah. Well, you know, I think <laughs> and it's just like, you know, are, are we dropping the ball on our end? You know, you already talk about the being able to work out all the time and stuff like that. Well, I mean, I can go in the gym with a kid at six o'clock in the morning and he still might leave. We we about to lose another kid after this year. <laughs> you know, I think, and it's uh, Sherm, I agree with everything you just said. I think I the, I think the one thing that you and Dermot, well, D 
different than Prince William, but like right now is a huge time for our kids. Mm -hmm. Right this moment, you know, they playing AU, whatever. This is a huge time. And for us not to be able, I can't go in the gym and work with them because it's right. Correct. Yeah. So with private schools being able to do that, it hurts us, our our ability. I got I got three kids that are Westfield kids right now that are in at different places. And, and um it hurts. It does hurt because it, it, it you know, that's your brand. Yeah. It hurts your brand. But I just think that um the depth of those schools is what, what gets you because they, what happens a lot of times when you have a kid in a public school, the depth of the public school is not the same as the depth of the private school. They get less exposed at the private school than they do at the public school because you're gonna do any and everything to take the ball out of that kid's hands at the public school. Well, at the private school, they might have three, four guys that can play and they get less exposed. Mm. That's just my opinion. That's my opinion. like. They get less exposed because they got three or four guys that are really talented around them. They get more exposed maybe in the public school side of it because you're going triangle and two them, boxing one of them. How many times you see that in a, in a WCAC game? Mm. How many times you see teams switching defenses and doing things? I what Durham said. I'll I'll, I'll coach against anybody at any place, any time. I'll. Mm any of these guys right here on this panel and they can coach, all of them can coach and they can beat everybody at those WC, at any school because they get it done. But I, cause they, they have to learn how to do more than one thing. They not you have to be able to coach what you have. Exactly. They, right. I mean, I'll never forget. It was, it might've been 20 years ago. I'm at uh, coach Wooten's uh, coaches clinic and I'm, this is my first year. I'm all excited. I'm, yeah, I got my Westfield W. I'm doing my thing. And Gino Ariyama, he said, I want all the public school coaches to stand up. I stand up all proud. He goes, y'all the most dumbest people I've ever met. <laughs> y'all the fools that got a coach that comes in your building. Not coach the style that you want to coach all the time and get better at that. You got to learn to do this, 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 and this because you can't recruit the kids that you want to have. Mm. And I think and you know what? I, I I went to him after that and said, you know what? That's what makes me better than you, because I can coach many different styles and do different things. You know, it's just my thought and opinion. Um, you know, you're gonna win some, you're gonna lose some. I, I at Westfield, we live off them coming back. Yeah. You know, and I will tell you that my, my final thing, and I know I got Tony and Carlos that need to speak is sometimes it's better for them to go away as freshmen. Okay, it, because them going away, they got to compete at a different level. Sometimes we have freshmen on varsity that probably shouldn't be there. And they may not grow the way that they need to grow because they already feel like I'm there. And so those kids that are like Tyler Scanlon coming back, if he, he may not be as good if he, he was at our place the whole time mm. at a different level because of that. And then he came back and brought that competitiveness back to Westfield to get it done. That's just right. I mean, that's, and, and, and like I said, I know Tony and Low Scott talk, but that's, I mean, you look at Centerville, a Kevin, really good coach. It helps when you get a six, seven kid to come back from PVI. Absolutely. And what, wasn't Chris at a private yeah. school as he well? Was he, was at PBI. he was at P2, he was, he was at PVI also. too. Yep. So, I mean, it's, you know, I, and I mess with Mike Robinson all the time. So I said, man, listen, if I had a 6'11 kid dropping my lap from somewhere, that'd be nice too. You know what I'm saying? I said, I said I'm trying to play with a 6'2 post guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, you know, I, I see that and obviously kids leave and come back. I just feel like there's a lot of bad advice that kids are getting. And maybe it's a lot to do with the, the social media and everything else. And I'm seeing this and, and doing that. Like, I don't, I don't know about y'all, but it bothers me when I see my kids post another high school kid on their social media. Ooh, <laughs> I, I I, it's, and it's not like a hating thing. I, like that's, and that's their favorite word to use now for everything. It's not that, it's just that, yo, like why are you idolizing somebody that's your age or younger? Like it's weird. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? So it's 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 a weird thing. And I I love the fact that when we were playing, we didn't know anything about the people we were playing. Like I remember we played against Dematha at in the summer league up at High Point out in Maryland. It was really good back in the day. And I mean, yeah, we knew it was Dematha, and but I didn't really know anything about Keith and Joe like that. So when we played them, like, man, y'all got to play us. We win all the time. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, I'm not watching their highlights every day and going on ball his life and seeing them do this to that guy. So it's like. I don't want to know who they are. I just, just want to play. I don't right. It's like, so it's the, they feel like the only way that they can compete be, and get the notoriety that they want is to go there. And instead of it being like, you know what, if I make this my own and I make this, like, if I do it here, I know I really did it. And instead, they were like, let me go somewhere where, I don't know. It's like I said, I can't, I'm saying this and I got, I got four boys. One's, you know, two of them too lazy to even do anything sports wise, but you know, my nine-year-old and my three-year-old, like they really look like they're going to do something athletic wise, just the way they move and act. So am I going to be that guy that when I get older to be like, you know, maybe this is where my kids need to be. I don't think so. So I don't want to judge. And then all of a sudden nine-year-old son gets to be 14, 15 and he's, he dominated stuff, and I got to think about whether or not he got to stay in a public school. And that's why I was asking, like, what happened? You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, can I say this? Hey, I hey, say look, this. hey, look, hey, look at look at Coach Harris. Coach Harris, Coach Harris' son. son goes to PVI. Now listen, his son yeah, is right? his, his son, team, and his son, his son different. His, his, his son, son different. His son, right? His son plays yeah, as yeah, a ninth yeah. grader on yeah. the varsity team at PVI. But I'm talking just, about those kids that go and sit on the bench. Uh, uh, but I'm going to say this. As a coach, I'm just going to say this. As a coach, I'm never letting my son go play at another school. I, look, that, that just I, takes, that's, that's my mindset. Uh, I, 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 okay. So uh, what I'm saying here, and I'm going to let Tony go. So the thing is, the brand, Kevin, and I talked to Kevin, and I've been known to Kevin's family since Kevin was little himself. The brand is the opportunity. And that's the bottom line to it. So that brand that they bringing over there, that they're going to, is going to get him to the next level, whether he can play or not. So a lot of you guys don't know, I coached at Marshall High School. The kid that played at Gonzaga was down at Michigan. Mother went to Marshall High School when I worked there. Okay. I told her straight up, I said, you know, why is he going to Michigan? Yeah. I said, he, got, he can go anywhere in the country. Why is he going to go to Michigan? I said, he probably can go somewhere and have a great career and play and, and get a lot of playing time. I said, he don't have to go to Michigan. I said, he's going to go compete now against my guys that, that really have the size and the athletic ability that he might not have. And she said, that's where he wants to go. And they were all happy about it. But now watching him on TV, he's not really playing. Mm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you, you know, you got to play. You know, so these guys and these kids go to these private schools when that opportunity to get to the, the next level. And, and I'm going to tell you guys, truly, I think that brand is getting them guys there. And I've talked to a lot of college coaches, and I've told you this, and I'm friends with all of them, not, and I travel with three or four coaches recruiting. And I was there when Tremaine Price was recruited to go to George Mason. Mm -hmm. And I was in the car, and I rode with the guy, and I'm just telling you, people, the college coaches don't grind anymore. They look at ratings. You're right. And, and they look at Marines. That's all they do. They don't even go talk to the about the character of the kid. They don't do any of that. When they want to know character about a kid, you know what they do? They call you, Sherman, and say, hey, how about this kid, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, how is he? You don't ask Glenn Farrello how he is. He called right. the coach that he left and want to know about him. This is true. Let's get, let's, let's get Coach Bentley and, uh, and Carlos in here. Let's go, let's go, Tony, you first. I, I mean, just going back to thinking about it all, I think Sherman could attest to this a little bit because – Wakefield, Potomac, back in the days, and even now for Potomac still, that was something to play for Potomac. Yes. That was something to play for Wakefield. Like, you know, you, you guys don't understand to be the coach of Wakefield, to be the coach of Potomac. It's, it's nothing like it with your, your – our fans ain't even the students. It's, it's, it's a cult. It's, 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 it, it really is. Like, it's it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Like, yeah. So, so kids wanted to play for Wakefield, wanted to play for Potomac, and that's no slight against Hayfield and and and, and no, and, no, it's a call. It's, a, it's, it's just a real saying call. that that's how it was. So, 
when I got the job at Wakefield, I didn't have that issue of kids leaving. And everybody, oh, you had O'Connell right down the street. Well, no, Joe's never came to my school and stole any of my kids. I never had that issue because kids wanted to play for Wakefield and wanted right. to win and try to bring a state championship or whatever to Wakefield. As my career has continued to pr progress, yes, I've mm -hmm. lost kids to private schools, but it's like, it's no sweat off my back. If that, if them and their parents feel that that's the best for them, no problem, go. I'm a public school, high school coach. I know who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable in my skin. Yes. I'm going to coach the kids that I have and I'm yes. going to work my ass off of those kids. If this doesn't fit, what then go to the biggest school that's going to give you the exposure. What I have done my first year at Wakefield, because you guys know I grew up in the neighborhood and Wakefield has had talent after talent. And a lot of those kids weren't going to college and they weren't going to junior college. They weren't going anywhere except for to the Wakefield game the following year to watch and be yeah. a fan. Yep. Yeah. So, and that's no knock against the staff before because I say this to every single parent and student that comes to Wakefield at my parent meeting. I cannot make a college coach take your son. You can say whatever you want. Coach yeah. Bentley didn't help my son. Co I cannot take make a college coach take yes. your son. So yes. when I get that out of the way, it's awesome. So my first year, me and my assistant coach, Buck, we've been together forever. We started hearing all the grumblings. Now remember now, I grew up in the Green Valley. I grew up there a mile away from Wakefield. So I know everybody's mom and daddy. My mom and daddy went to Wakefield. It, like, like Carlos said, it's a cult. It's a family thing. Well, it used to be. Used to be a family thing. <laughs> So when I got the job, oh, parents, I, I went to school with their parents. Mm. Now it's like, oh, my man Bentley the coach, my son gonna play, my son gonna do this. <laughs> so try imagining separating yourself from growing up there and all my life I've been known as Little Tony in Green Valley. Yep. Oh, I got some other nicknames that I can't say on here, but you know, and the fact is, so they thought that their son was going to play because of me and all of this type of stuff. Well. And what I kept hearing was my son's a division one athlete, division one athlete. Well, I knew what a division one athlete looked like and none of those kids were. So right. we piled them up in my minivan and my, my assistant coach's van. We take them to Randolph Macon. We take this whole team of these D1 athletes, 15 of them to Randolph Macon to go watch a college basketball game. Mm -hmm. They played against, I think, Christopher Newport or Virginia West at the time. One of the best games I had seen. Diving, hustling, shooting, bigs, littles, whatever it was, into the game. Get the guys on the hallway and say, fellas, you all think y'all can play here? And they was like, coach, man, these dudes play hard. And I said to them, this is Division Three. Right. Yeah. They had no idea that, that Randall Smith was, was a Division Three. So that was my first thing that I did when I got to Wakefield was to educate these kids and the parents mm -hmm. that your son probably won't even be able to play at Division Three. Right. So now let's get back to South Arlington. Let's focus on Wakefield basketball and let the chips fall where they may. So mm -hmm. throughout my career, what I've done, because mm -hmm. Derm, uh, 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 Doug can tell you on this, in, in 05, I had a six, seven kid that could flat get it done. Alex, oh. one of the best players in Northern Virginia. Lost me a regional title. Yo, just trust me. This kid, <laughs> and not only that, because the knock on the Wakefield kid back in the day was they didn't have the grades. This kid had a 3.8 and spoke four different languages. Write his own mm. ticket any way he wanted to go. And the thing that baffled me, George Mason, American, none of them, never called. See what so, I'm saying? That's crazy. But when he didn't get any interest from the big schools, and he wasn't really tripping, we sat on an office. I said, Alex, what, what are we trying to do? Who do we need to talk to? He said, Coach, I don't even want to go play Division One basketball. I said, well, wait, you, you have the skills to play Division One basketball, son. You're a six, seven stretch. You can do it. He said, you know what? I can write my own ticket because of my grades. I can go to any school I want to go to and I can play ball. He said, you know what? I want to go to a D3 school and be a big fish in a little pond. Good for him. And he did. Mm -hmm. He went to Randolph Macon under Mike Rose. That's why I love Mike Rose to, this, to death. Great dude. But that, fre that freshman year for Alex, it took a little adjustment. And he said, coach, he called me, said, coach, I like everything here, but I don't think I'm going to play. Can you get me out of here? Called up Chris Harney at St. Mary's. Alex goes, plays three years at St. Mary's University, averaged 16 and eight for his career, has a great time living on the water in Maryland, gets his degree, and now he's working in real estate. He's, you know, every path for every kid is different. Different. So yeah. What I've done at, at Wakefield is I've tried to talk to and educate my parents because they didn't know this. Division two gives out money too. 
Right. So uh, you, you, a lot of my kids have gone Division two and Division three, And, you know, we've worked out money at the Division three level, academic-wise. So I've targeted that at my program as Division two, And I get these younger kids in my camp. Coach, how many Division one players you had? I had one. I've been there 19 years. One. And let me tell you this. And that a week after he signed his Division one scholarship, they took it away. Hmm. Got caught smoking weed in the bathroom. Got caught smoking weed in the bathroom. Oh, okay. They had nothing. Done. So hmm. everybody's path is different. So when you talk about, and you guys are saying it now, I'm not going to be that dad, or I'm going to be that, you don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't path. know. You don't know. Right. So don't you don't bad mouth some of these kids that's going. And, and so, it works for some, and some it doesn't. Right. You know, I, so, that, I, hmm. I mean, I agree with that. Like you said, it's, I, I, and when they tell me, and a lot of times I hope they tell me they don't just all of a sudden just stop showing up and stuff. You never know. And I said, listen, let me know what I can do to help you and make you have you make a good decision. You know, it's one of those things that if you feel like it's the best thing for you and then I'm going to do everything I can to help you, I'm going to give you an honest assessment. And hopefully that assessment, like if if I think it's better for you to stay in a public school, I'll tell you that if I think it's better for you to go, then I think you should. You, you know what I'm saying? And I know a lot of coaches don't do that because they're too worried about their own stuff. But it's like but Tony said, I, if you want to be here, that's who I want to coach. Because if you got one foot in and one foot out, I'm going to start to have issues with you. You know, I, like, yeah. so it's just, it's one of those things. And then I'm going to say this in the during I let you have it. I think, like I said, like I wasn't here, but if I had to try to guess, I think that the, the boom in kids training, parents paying for all this training and strength and conditioning and all this stuff. Now it's looked at like an investment where it's like, I got to get a payoff on my investment. So that's why they're so hard on trying to push these things because if I'm going to spend all this in it, and before it used to just kind of like be like baseball, and like soccer, where they would do right. those sorts of things. And so when it went outside of that, like I'm telling you, I, there are kids that go and train. I'm like, you well, you can't even play at your high school. Why are you spending money on this? You know what I'm saying? And because everybody thinks that they can go do this. I can go do this as long as I train long enough. Hey, man, it's not for everybody. Uh, again, I want to say something on this. So you guys know I work with Arthur Jackson. We've been doing this for 25 years. My PE department chair came and sat today first day back with kids in the building and she came to me and she said you said something six years ago that's smacking me in my face right now and I and she said I want to apologize to you she said because I bad mouthed you six years ago when you told me this so basically when her kids were little I told her that you're going to pay more money for youth league sports than you will for high school sports she didn't believe me I told her, I said, I'm telling you right now, I'm in the youth league. The parents, the money they're paying right now for their kids to be superstars are unbelievable. Mm -hmm. They are going to different trainers. Don't, guys, it's for real. They're going to different trainers and all that. And then when they get to high school, the parents' expectation is that these kids are yeah, way the bad as well. Right? And right. they don't understand. Yeah. And I've been saying to them all along, if you go back and look at the rules, how they change the rules for each league. So it's not competitive. The other day I, I'm doing at my school and I go up there on a Sunday. Do you know the coaches were fighting because a kid has to sit out 15 minutes and a half or 10 minutes. That's a new rule. Like the kid and the coaches were saying that the kid didn't. So he had to sit out and the other team made a run and the coach put him in and the coach said he can't do that. And the kids pick up on it. Yeah, so they, they pick up on it. So what I'm saying to you is that now that we can't get in the gym, and I'm going to leave it at this, I got eight kids going to eight different trainers. Mm. How do you how do you coach kids that all go to trainers? Parents got the money to go to the trainers, and the parent thinking their kids should play. But I just watched them miss four layups, and you get mad at me because I want to take them out. <laughs> Carlos, man, you better get you better get in here, Carlos. You know, during yeah. He about to go crazy. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Carlos, hey. I, Carlos been with me. He coached with me. Right, but go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Hey, yeah, Carlos, so you're I, the floor I, now. I'll say, I'll say this. So, like, I feel like it really started turning, like, I want to say, like, 04. Like, 04, 05 is where okay. I really saw, 
like an influx of of kids going to like private schools and and you know in addition to public school you know the public school way I feel like uh, you know to me it's, there's no right or wrong uh, whatever path they choose is the path they choose I would I just would like I would just would like I always want a chance to to coach to coach one of these elite kids like like for me like last year there's four four kids who who were on private schools all got D1 offers all went, you know, all are going somewhere D1. But if they were at Hayfield, I feel like they could have still done the same thing. I just feel like that. For one, there are four, I, I, there I, are four ex Hayfield, there are four ex Hayfield players. You said got no. There, there's four. There's four kids who did who didn't end up coming to Hayfield. They end gotcha. up going to different private schools. Right. Uh gotcha. Oh, that's that's rough. Yeah. No, but it's. I mean, and then it's cool, but it's just. I wish I had the opportunity to even coach those guys and you know I, right. I don't get that opportunity at Hayfield anymore like the kid the, the kids that are really really good they don't come and you know we just we gotta we gotta get the kids that we have better and that's and that's what I always try to hang my right. hat on to to do that is to get mm -hmm. my kids as as good as possible so that they can play at the next level you know I, like Benny said I've only had one kid play D1 and he played D1 for three months and end up, and now he's at, now he's at a D two school. So like, uh, you know, I feel like I've always had like D two, D three um, level kids. You know, I've had some good athletes, but I never had like real specialized D one um, talent. Yeah. You know, and like how how Durham said, you know, these kids they get filled, their heads get filled with you know, with the mentality that they're d1 guys and you know it, and to me it's just not the case d1 is a very it's very hard to play at yes. um as, no, as sherm can contest go I, ahead one thing the one thing that i <laughs> want to say and i apologize for this but, but one thing that goes on that they that they don't understand and a lot of times the reason why they come back to their public school is those private schools are recruiting as well they they, they like a college the, the day they get you on campus they trying to get you out. They trying to find somebody better than you. And at the end of the day, exactly. Think about this now. As good as Tyler Scanlon was, think about it. I mean, he killed it at BU. Then he transfers to Belmont. They win the conference, and they don't get to go to the tournament last year. And he right. was amazing, right? I mean, almost averaged a triple double. EJ Hawkins was yeah. better. He went to Louisville. Yeah. Okay, and they brought yeah. him in. And Tyler's like, yeah. I'm supposed to be the man. This is, you know, I'm a junior. Yeah. Be the man. Nah, you're not the man. We got this dude. He's the man. You know? And yeah. so that's the one thing that those kids don't understand. But it also, they got they, they do learn to compete at that because of that. They know that yeah. the next. So I think it's, you know, it is what it is. Now, All right, I'm going to say this. Well, last Go ahead, thing, Tony. Just real quick. You, and you think about that being able to compete. The, the kid that's at Paul the Six right now, Deshaun Harris Smith. Mm hmm. Flat, get it done. His mom and daddy went to Wakefield. This kid wow. wanted to come to Wakefield at all of our games. Mm. Loved this kid to death. I can't do nothing for that kid. <laughs> exactly. He has to go to Paul the Six that has all of that. And me mm. and his mom talk, and I'm happy for him. He's mm. going to be playing at the next level. And, and I wouldn't have been able to do anything for that kid. And I'm happy that he is where he is to get that opportunity. But that's what makes you special, Tony. There, there's not a <laughs> Of us out there, what yeah. Sherm said, Sherm said, I'm happy for that dude to go. Yeah. Yeah. If, if that's the right move for him, yes, some people are some selfish dudes. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna say this, and, and everybody knows I've been at Woodson, we lost a ton of players at Woodson. Okay, Eric Bowles went to high school with me, his kid came to Woodson. All these private schools wanted to go, he didn't leave, he came to play for me at Woodson. That's a known fact, that's my man, and it worked out for Eric Bowles because AAU helped him out. I got a kid now. His, his father is my brother. That's the way I look at it. He might want to go to private school. I want him to go because of the brand. That's why he came to West Springfield. I wanted to build him up before he can get that opportunity. Yeah. But I'm upset yeah. because I tried to get all those guys to take him in the seventh grade, and nobody wanted to take him. Yeah. And then he comes to play for me, and he plays well, and now they want to take him. And that's fine and dandy. But I'm going to say that. Hey, I'm that's, gonna, how hey. it always, that's how it happens. Uh, but yeah. I want to say this, but Carlos was with me. So I'm going to tell you guys something. So Carlos coached with me this year in the PYBL Showcase Tournament. I had no kids that had any scholarship offers. 
We beat two teams, one team by 25, where four kids got four division one off, and we smacked them by 25. And that's yeah. real fact. So these kids we got playing can play. We had our, our team. <laughs> Let's, you're right. We we played in that St. James League uh, before hey, the season. Hey, we were sure. looking up to playing that. Right. And we play, we played Murray. Hey, uh, Los was out there, and they got that six seven guy that's going to Colorado. And we Smack blew him out. We, we blew him. We blew him out. And, and so it's like, and that's why, like I said, where where is it? Do they start to be like, all right, is this the best thing for? Me? Like Tony, you said, there's nothing you could do for that kid. If that kid's that good, you ain't got to do anything for him. <laughs> right, right. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Like you just got to be like, hey, here's the ball. Let's get it done. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's where, like, our, our – I'm not talking about the French kids that need that. I'm talking about those kids that are good enough that wherever they are, we're going to go watch them. Yeah. And that's the ones that I don't understand. It's like, how do you don't feel like you have to go there to so get to – It's it's too funny, though, because – you want to put like if a kid is really really good, you want to you want to have those guys playing in the best competition that they can play, period. So like you know right. those kids they got it they got to do it. But like how you said like them French kids, I feel you. But like do, the do, do they have board, to? Like, do they have to? Because if they're that good, they're gonna be playing on a really good AAU team. Yeah, yeah. but I don't yeah. duh, I don't feel like uh, what's the kid like Trevor Kills? I don't feel like Trevor Kills should be playing in Northern Virginia basketball. Why? I feel like it would just be. I don't feel like it would be getting better. I, I mean, I, let's. I, like I said, I'm not going to act like it's 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 the same competition through and through because clearly it's not. I, I get that, but is it? If they're doing all the things that they're doing now, they're doing all the training, they're traveling all over the place, playing against different competition. Like you said, you like Julie, you talked about those Potomac teams I played on. You know, it was super competitive at our practices. You know what I'm right. saying? It wasn't super competitive when we walked in the gym at OP. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> that, so it was, that was where the competition was at. So we made each other better. And then when we played and like, you know, we pushed each other, we got better. And then when it was time for us to short against the really good teams, we were able to do that. That's why I said, what happened to it? Let's stay here, compete against each other, kick everybody's tail around here. And then when we got to go other places, you know, because like you said, you got the takeovers, the DC assault. Like Cliff didn't play for the Prince William AAU team. Yeah, he, he played, played DC for DC assault. Right. I didn't. Right. I played. I played with Boo Williams. Right. You know, that's right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So but, that's where that's the part I don't understand. But how much is this as parents? I mean, like for example, uh, Tony was talking about he had two Wakefield classmates who had this kid, and, and for you now, like for example, my, my son plays. He plays soccer at Alexandria United. He's a, he's a really good player. He can play anywhere, but I, I want him to be in a place where he's going to play the whole game, be the man. I don't want him to be at the best club. I want him to be at a club where he's going to be the man and play. I want him to have responsibility for his team's wins and losses. How much is this his parent expectation in dealing with uh, parents? I told you, you're getting ready. I hope I didn't mess up what you're getting ready to say, but how much is this is dealing with parents? No, I, I think for that, that particular situation, you know, I knew his parents. Um, right. and we talked and there was no beef or anything like that. It was what was, was best. You, you also, you know, the social media, all of these things playing, every kid wants to post committed or, or not committed, but what is it? Uh, the, the scholarship offer. Oh yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Fine. I'm, blessed, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm blessed to announce that I got an offer tonight. Like Tony, I, let me just say this really quick. I don't know about y'all, but I can't stand to see kids talking about some offer. That they got from a D three school. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like you that's know, not an offer, no guys. Offer. Like, like relax. But yeah. that's it's not their fault because you think about it. A lot of these schools have signing days for yeah. kids that are doing a celebration letter. It's yeah. not an actual commitment letter. But go on. I'm, I just want no, to say that. I, 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 mean, I, I think it's also to parents, coaches, AAU coaches. You know, people listening to different people. You know, they've taken the power out of regular high school coaches' hands, and the AAU coaches do a lot certain ones and certain programs. Um, so it's, it's just still building those relationships and knowing what's best for the kid is, is I think it's paramount that you, you build those relationships. And those are relationships that I've built. And, and I have yes. no issue when someone says that before we hit Wakefield, we going. Now, when they hit Wakefield, 
and, and, you on that. and, and we give them the, the push and the drive and the go, and then they transfer. That's when it kind of bothers you a little bit. But at the end of the day, I can't do anything about it. Yep. You know, I can come home and, and, and sulk about it, but I got to go on because I got 14 other guys that I got to worry about. So, no question. yeah, you, hey, you, you know, you just have to, man. I'm going to say this. I just got off the phone, guys, with Daryl Proof. So I just want you guys to know that. Okay. Daryl Proof's a funny dude. Yeah, I know Daryl. I love Daryl the back. I, I got, and I got five phone calls since I've been on this Zoom meeting. Uh, Chris Kazimka, father, just called me, want to talk about basketball. What, what are we live? How do people know uh, we're hey, going to yeah. Hey, look, <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> hey, so I, uh, Justin, <laughs> Justin, Justin. But I want to say this to you guys. What's funny is, you know, we all, Doug, you and all of us, we all good friends with a lot of different college coaches, right? Um, I called Mike Jones down at Rafford about a kid. He immediately called the coach about him. I always think he's a good guy. If you got guys that can play Sherman, all you guys, send them to Mike Jones. Okay. I call, you know, VCU, you know, and, and, and they go look at the guy. You know, I call Hubert. I might not get a fucking call back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, I call Bill Courtney. I got to go tell him I'm going to talk about childhood stuff. And then I get a call back. I call Eddie Jackson, you know, who was one of us at one time and won't go look at any kids who got good grades that can play. Jason Agner, you guys don't know him, can shoot the we know the ball. Oh, oh, I know who he is. Yeah, we don't know who Jason Agner is. Uh, <laughs> okay, here's the thing is, here's the thing is, American would look at him. I mean, but Jeremy, if you're being honest, Jason Agner wasn't no Division One kid. But he's, he could play at American. Uh, can you know, he, can, he can be on the team at American. No, that's not, you know, here's the difference, <laughs> Hey, Sherman, he can shoot the, the basketball. I'm not going to disagree with that, but, but Sir, that Sherman. kid was not athletic enough to play at that level. But Sherman, Sherman, but you ready for this? You was telling me he's not athletic enough, but I sent the guy that played four years there. Yeah. And Jason, and Jason is just, if not, probably better and a better shooter. And yeah, but Jason, I, think, I think Jason probably happy where he at being able to shoot the ball 15, yeah. shoot 15 threes. No, 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 no. Jason wanted to play it, but I'm just yeah. saying. But, but what's the difference between the two kids that play play for me at Woodson? But Derm, Derm, assistant coaches don't they, they their job is to get out on the road and do that recruiting and, and make that connection. We gotta understand now. I've seen we we've all seen assistant coaches get fired because they recruited the wrong kid. Mm. You gotta make sure that they they when they in that recruiting and they when they going to get that kid. They, they trying to get the highest level kid that they can get, A, B, C, D. They're going to try to get A, and they miss out on A. They're going for B. If they miss out on B, they're going to get for C. So that ain't fair to, to, to knock a dude because your dude, they found him at F. And he could have been C, but they had him at F. And he, some schools evaluate different. And so, you know, you got to understand. I, I, I hear what you're saying, but I'm saying this. Doug, if you call him, you want him to come and look at Blake Francis. What, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I agree with that. They got at least you got at least give it yeah. a look. You know, I mean, I mean, I mean, that's what, you talk that's about what, respect the profession. If you, I mean, I, you know, Doug, we talk about the guy, the Capital Classic stuff before you guys started. I was pushing for all the Virginia kids, yeah. and I was okay. telling the running coaches, "Let's get it on when you want to play." Hey, coach, you know, and I know, and I don't mean to be putting stuff out there. O'Connell back in the day got kids because they was using the Capital. They were using McDonald All American. To get absolutely, to get absolutely. Because yeah. they they had, they had somebody on there that was a voter, and yeah. so I mean I mean let's keep it real. He been you know when I, I out of all the private schools, I got the most respect for Glenn, and the reason I say that is Glenn only gonna bring in four or five kids a year. Some schools bring in fifteen yeah. or twenty and then let them spray back out. Glenn gonna get Glenn gonna go out there and get three or four kids. When Sean was at St. John's. When Sean was at St. John, he wasn't getting t- bringing in eight or nine kids. He was bringing in th- two or three kids. Yeah, right. And they were yeah. and they were going to stick. And so I I don't I don't yeah. I have no respect for the, the the private school guy that's bringing in 10, 11 freshmen. You know. Let me, let me run a ter- let, me, let me run one theory by you guys. So I, I know that uh, okay. one thing I think has happened to high school basketball is, is they cheapened the brand. It used to be I mean there, there's six classifications now. 
Um, I mean, a, a Northern Virginia team is almost guaranteed a chance to win a state every year, which is, which is nice. But when, you know, in the 80s and the 90s, it was, you had, you had to win the region or, or be runner up to get to the state tournament. Um, it, was a, it was a long road. I mean, Sherman, Sherman can tell you all about that. Doug, Doug was out there trying as well with, with, uh, with Chantilly. But now, nowadays, like, like, for example, if Grant Hill would have gone to Flint Hill, which he could have, he would have missed out on going to the, the Robinson with 6,000 people screaming for him. I mean, the Final Four was a big deal back then, going to state, to Williamsburg and stuff. They don't have that kind of environment these days in high school basketball. Um, is that no. taking your joy, your joy away as a coach? Um, has it ruined the brand for the, for the players as well, or, or does it matter? That that's kind of irrelevant. I, 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 got, I, I got a funny story in regards to that and, like, the brand mm -hmm. kind of being watered down. And Like I said, I left for a while. And I remember the first game we played at Garfield and I looked at Keith and I said, when are they opening the rest of the bleachers? Like I asked him that during warmups. He said, they're not. I said, where's everybody going to sit? He said, well, they're not coming. I said, I said, you serious? Like we used to play them and people would be there by halftime of the girls game or you weren't going to get in. And so I don't know if it's because like you said, obviously the, booming population there's more schools i mean you just look at the the number of schools in princeton county that were that are here now compared to i mean i'm at a school that didn't exist so uh, uh you know it just maybe that was what it is you know we weren't lucky enough to play at a the neutral site for our our region because our region stretched across the entire state of virginia right. yeah. <laughs> uh, you know but i remember going up to mason and watching the northern region play up the tournament and I was like man this is amazing you know what I'm saying it's amazing. I remember the feeling, it was I remember the feeling of going down to Lynchburg and being in the final four for that you know what I'm saying so it's and just yeah yeah I mean I listen I just was hyped to go in the locker room let alone on the floor <laughs> so yeah. and then yeah. what, 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 to, what Tony said earlier I remember when Coach Hayes walked into my middle school and met with us to talk about Potomac High School and how there was nothing wow. I wanted to do more than play at Potomac High School. And what, yeah. like, listen, of course it was Georgetown and North Carolina around that time, AI was there, but you couldn't tell me anything once I put on that Potomac practice dress. And yeah. that is the part I think that sticks out the most is that kids don't look at it that way. Like I saw a kid just recently um, that's gonna go to PBI next year, really good basketball player. And that's where he probably should go. It was the best thing for him. And I saw like the post said, this kid has dreamed of going to PVI his whole life. Like, I'm like, what? <laughs> so he don't live nowhere near there. Right. <laughs> you know, so that, like, that's the type of stuff where I was like, man, it's just so different. You know, it just, I, I don't know, man. It's just, I don't know what to do. Like I said, we have maybe two games all year that's like packed like that. And that's when we play Battlefield. And that's, that's really, a, and y'all have a couple of rivalry games like that too. But that game reminds me how it used to be in the 90s where people were just there and it's 2,500, 3,000 people there to watch a high school basketball game. It's amazing. Yeah. Regardless of the outcome, I regardless of how good the teams are. And, you know, I know when Potomac plays against Freedom, it still happens regardless of what the team's records are. Um, but that used to be something that happened every night. <laughs> and like I said, I, I made the joke talking about Osborne Park. You know, we would play them at home and we still would be full in the gym, even though they knew we were going to win by 50. Yeah. <laughs> so I, mean, now, I remember when I went back to Potomac, I said, I would say to people, y'all going to come to the game? Y'all going to win. I ain't coming anyway. <laughs> I remember coming out at halftime one time and a security guard said to me, we were up 20. She said, y'all better get it together. I said, y'all are spoiled rotten. Yeah. I said, spoiled yeah. rotten. You have no idea of the, the enjoyment you should just get from coming to watch these kids compete. And I just, like I said, I remember sitting on the bench as a ninth grade, knew I was going to get in the game. Now, like I said, I watched that whole thing with Coach Chase. He's talking about that William Fleming game when Roland got the foul on the jump ball. I remember sitting there and being like, man, that's crazy. I ain't going to play, but that's wild. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, I used to go over to Wakefield with, with Coach Bentley with Tony, before Tony was coaching there. The environment on a Tuesday night at, at Wakefield, I, I referee there. The, the locker room of the officials was right there. You come out. I mean, the gym was packed. Yes. Yeah. I mean, on, the, a Tuesday, yeah. on a Tuesday. On a Tuesday. If we play a midweek game now, I'm like, man, I hope they come. 
Hold on. <laughs> it's just the, crazy. The, the, the thing that you think about, think about this now, you didn't have any social media either. You didn't. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Doug. Thank the, you, Doug. The game, you didn't have to pub the game. They no. just, hey, Herndon, Westfield Herndon, back in the Scotty Reynolds days. Man, you talk, you talking about those battles. They come to our place? Or shoot, back in the, when I was at Chantilly and we were in the Potomac District, them fools, they, they had to come all the way out the country to come play us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna say you this. Guys. Hey, but hey, hey, also, also though, like I feel like the other sports doesn't support as as much as well, too. Like, Very like football, so. like. I remember when I was in school, the football team always used to be, always used to be oh, at the gym on Tuesdays and Friday fine. nights. And yeah. right now, that to me, that doesn't happen. Like the baseball, the baseball kids were our best fans. Like those kids, we used to be in the front with the cardboard cut out of the yeah, bus, all, the jingling keys. Go crazy. You know what I'm saying? All yeah. of that stuff. That's because they were, that's they were because they're training. Game, so. They're training. It's, yeah, yeah. There's, there's yeah. money to be made out there. They're training. They got, they, they got their travel baseball. They got their football training. There's training. They, they, they not putting aside their own individual for the school. That's mm -hmm. right. for, the, yeah. for the people that they want to root for them, they not rooting for them. Is that yeah. yeah. Well, I blame the administration and the school system. They take away you, you, one pep rally now. I mean, it's no school. That is spirit. very true. What you're saying right there is, is I mean, spot on. And, you know, we're going to get real basketball. And obviously all this thing is the most important sport in school. But I remember having pep rallies just for the basketball team. And that is unheard of now. Like they said, well, yeah. if we do a pep rally for y'all, we got to do it for everybody. Well, ain't nobody come and watch them play. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you're exactly right about that, Dur. That is, they do one pep rally, and then at our school, they said we can't have it in the gym because we got too many kids. So they split the student body up and have ninth and tenth graders in there, and then come in with the the eleventh and twelfth. And I'm oh, like, wow. Wow. so they do a back to back dope. pep yeah. rally. And right, no the return crazy. period. No the return. Period. We used to have a pep rally, and I remember like I remember being so hyped. Because right around when I started getting athletic, I said, "Man, I can't wait to be able to dunk in a pep rally." I said, "I can't wait." Yeah. <laughs> and of course, of course, I missed every dunk I tried to do. <laughs> you know, but it's like we used to have so many pep rallies, and this we can talk about this not even just for a basketball standpoint, but they like you talk about administration. I don't think they make school fun for kids anymore. Like y'all remember how many times did we have assemblies, pep rallies? people come in and they would just like things that they would make school fun to go to. Now it's like teach bell to bell. Sorry, we can't have this. Teachers get mad that there's pep rally schedule because it takes away from their class time. Yeah. But I, I think we failing kids. Mm -hmm. You know, now this is maybe off basketball and I apologize. When we were in high school, <laughs> nine tardies in a quarter, you fail for the quarter. Sir. We had three unexcused absences. You fail for the quarter. Yep. And we are not, holding kids the only people that are holding kids accountable is the people in this panel mm -hmm. and we're losing that because you're too tough on my kid how many coaches you see losing a job you know because they they scared there's so many coaches are scared Did just the guy get suspended for two games on california because he beat somebody too bad <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Well, now listen, the score was 161 to two, which is yeah. outrageous. <laughs> so, uh, so, but still, he got suspended yeah. two games by California public schools for beating a team too bad. And the coach from the other team was like, I can't believe he's coaching this because he didn't play any starters in the second half yeah. and he didn't press. For the, I got the a question. Why second. is he playing that team? Why Not is he? Yeah. Is what you should it's be probably mandated. <laughs> Tony, so, Tony, you guys still get good crowds at Wakefield? You got, you guys took uh, no, no, we don't, don't get, get good crowds. Good. Yeah. It's the same reason that everybody else has. Uh, I think Doug hit it on the head. It training, you know, we got kids going to you know swimming, uh, golf. They're doing so many different things. And then I will say, for a few years at a time, we were really kicking butt. And I would talk to the students in the hall. Yo, y'all coming to the game night? Oh no, nah, coach, we just gonna wait till y'all get to the playoffs. Exactly. <laughs> And yeah, it's like, exactly. hey, that's true. Yeah. You know, or y'all just playing such and such tonight. Is y'all going to win? By, so we're not coming. So yeah. there's no fans. There's no, you know, we, we gave the fans the name super fans back in 04. And they still call themselves super fans, but they're not. Right. They were the they're real weather. super fans they're back fans. in the day, man. Yeah, it's just, and, it, and they wait for you to come. And then, like, I always try to tell my kids that, you know, 
it's really us starting in whatever, June, all the way through our season. When we say it's just us, it's just us. But what's, what's going to happen is this, fellas. Check this out. We're going to bust our butt all year long. We're going to win 20 games, lose five, whatever it may be. We're going to be finding ourselves in the regionals. And we're going to be there. And the crowd's going to be there. And the game's going to be over. They're going to sprint on the court. And they're going to all start saying what? We won. We No. <laughs> you didn't win. We won. So that's another we thing that I try to yeah. teach my kids is why we got to stick together. We love yeah. our fans. Don't get me wrong. But mm-hmm. we got to stick together because when we t- they talk about we won. No. We won. Right. So we want to celebrate that the hard work we put in that they came during the playoffs. That's it. They wasn't there when yeah. we was playing against Jefferson. When we was playing against Falls Church or whatever early in the year. But they want to get there. We Potomac and in, in the big games, and they to wake your fans. No, but here's yeah. here's the thing: is you saying the same thing though? You you know, if the administration don't push for kids to be a part of the athletic experience, you're not going to have it. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So the bottom line is, you know, it, it's twofold. You know, you guys are you know all happy for your kids, but it's got to be a community thing. And, and and we don't have that anymore. But Durham also, oh, yeah, too, but I, also too, and Doug can probably attest to this as well, Sherm can attest to it, is the fact that these kids are taking four and five AP classes now. Yeah, no yeah, question. Exactly. They, they gotta go home. They got homework. Yeah. They can't be at the game. Yeah, so you, you gotta, you, I mean. I, I mean, you know you know what? Y'all could, first of all, y'all gonna tell me when I'm at Woodson, for eight years, we won 22 games or more, and our gym was packed every night. No, that's, that's real fact. The, the calorie <laughs> because you only can put 50 people in there. Hey, 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 you can say what you want to say. That motherfucker was packed with thousands it was. of people. We played that. Hey, hey, hey. That was packed. Hey, look, yeah. and I'm going to tell you something. We, our kids were taking AP courses and doing all that. Kids do what they want to do. Don't act. Don't, yeah. don't oh, they, oh, oh, they, they going to be at that football game on Friday night. Oh, uh, they, 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 Friday night. Yeah. They can so, but listen, so, if you said that you got the job because West Springfield, I mean, uh, Woodson beat Wakefield and that helped you get a job, I tell you what, then the whole cavalry should be on your damn bench. <laughs> it, when, when Peter Murray started hitting them threes and Eric Bowe started going around everybody, you should have took them with you. They should be your assistant coaches. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Tony, go ahead. Hey, 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 look. hey, Tony, hey, Tony, but I'm going to say this. The year that I played against Doug, them jokers had a fat head and every time I got angry, they would have my head up and go, he's angry, <laughs> he's angry. <laughs> like, when, I tell, when I tell you that they came over there about 400 strong, yeah. wearing white, and you know, I love it. I mean, even they met West Springfield. You nice. know, I go to Popeye's, you see me at Popeye's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have Coach Marshall night like, with Popeye bags in a sweatsuit. <laughs> so we still have, so, you know what I'm saying? So, you guys, let me, let me tell you what it was, let me tell you what it was like for the old timers. So when I was in seventh grade at Robinson, 1978, uh, Robinson, the girls team had won the state in 77. The boys team got second in the state. On a Tuesday night, we'd walk down and we'd go to, we'd go to a game, walk down the hall to a game. We'd have 4,000 people on a Tuesday night. On a, on a regular Tuesday night, it'd be 4,000. On a Friday night, there'd be 5,000 people on a regular game. I mean, this is regular season basketball. That, that's the way it was at Robinson. Now, when I was at a teams were so bad. Eventually, we we lost we lost those crowds. That uh, my JV year, the varsity team was three and eighteen, and then by the time I got there, we were we were about five hundred again. So we never we never got that crowd back. But in the late seventies, early eighties, high school basketball was king in Northern Virginia. I mean, it was it was wherever you went, the gyms were packed, and the the coaches were icons. I mean, you guys do a great job. I love you guys. You guys are great for your kids. And your kids appreciate you, but the whole community was behind the basketball coach, like like Kendall Hayes and and um, and uh, Potomac, uh, Beltran and and and, and uh, Wakefield, obviously uh, uh, Martino and uh, and, uh, and Chantilly, then Lake Braddock. I mean, it's it's, it's a shame you guys don't uh, experience the kind of uh, love and crowd that you. Right, it was it's, pro- it's probably eighty percent less schools too. So yeah. you know, yeah, and, yeah, and, and, and the internet that's, that's big. That's a that's I mean, that's a big thing, man. It, it's so spread out that, you know, like you said, kids now um, can go to any school they want if they get into certain programs. So they don't grow up knowing that they're gonna go to a certain yeah. school. Uh, it's yeah. just you know things are not conducive to having people be prideful in their area school. And like Tony talked about, I mean, you know, it's Potomac is just it's, it's a different entity in itself as far as the the the, the people that are there. 
like I said, the, the craziest fans are the adults that have been going, yeah. not the kids. And it's like you look in the stands and you got guys up there yelling at you that played there back in 92, you know, and they, 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 and they, still, they still bleed. I mean, listen, I can't tell you we played them and they, they, they put it on us. I almost wanted to get off of Facebook because everybody on my Facebook is is if I went to school with and they couldn't wait to talk about what's the score of the game. Oh man, it's sorry when I talk about we's playing them. Sorry, we can't be with you on this one. I'm like y'all supposed to be my boys, man. Talking about it's 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 blue blood till I die. I'm like y'all didn't even play basketball. What you mean? <laughs> so it's it's but that it's 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 so like I said though it's that's a you take that place out. And even there, it's not something that's overly packed all the time like it was. And like I said, I think it has a lot to do with, like you said, the kids being able to go to whatever school they want to. Um, the amount of schools and the, being spread out, obviously the influx of new people moving into different places and, and not being in those environments for a long period of time. So they're not looking at those coaches, like you said, like icons. They're not, I just, like you said, I talked about Coach A's, but Coach Robson was the same way for me, and he mean Coach Exactly. Me too, Coach Robinson. He coached me at Robinson. Yeah, he's great. I remember I would go to their open gyms at Woodbridge and be like, man, this dude, uh, Coach Rob, he's that guy like hanging on every word he said. And so those type of things is just – it's. and this is, you know, another thing I think is contributing. We talk about the kids and them playing and stuff. I don't know about y'all in Fairfax, but I don't know if y'all have a rule where you're not really allowed to have older guys come back and play at open gyms right. anymore down in our yeah, area. That's what they say. I, I don't. Uh, listen, I, like I said, I that's what they say. What they I ain't gonna say but so much because it's gonna go on the net. But <laughs> yeah. that's what they say. The, the rules are you're not supposed to have right. kids, older kids come to gym. And I remember it's being so in open stupid. Gyms. It's so stupid to me. It doesn't make any sense. I remember being in open yeah. gyms and having guys come back from school, and even if they weren't in school, they're just really good from the neighborhood, and they would murder us. Yeah. And that's how we got good. Now you got all these kids playing against each other on time thinking that they can play just because they beat up on like opponents. You know? I think with, yeah. with that being said, like they the rule can't come back. You telling me that I have a kid who played for me for four years, he went off the right. top. You telling me he can't come back to Correct. the gym that he started to help to play ball against this guy. That's some of these rules are like ridiculous. Like yes. you know, yeah. ball this year, but I'm not gonna talk about that. But just some of these rules are just ridiculous that you can't have former guys come back and play against you. They, they, that's what they was. And then what happens is, like like you said, like Lowe's, I ain't bring up uh, Hayfield, but Lowe said he ain't paying attention to that rule. Okay, so then my kids are going to go down to Hayfield because that's where the bump is at. <laughs> exactly. And so when I first got a job at Wakefield, the best bump was at Wakefield. <laughs> now, Mike Robb's still in all the bump. Everybody in South County. Right. So, you know, it, it's because of districts and whatever you can't do it. It's so many things that it's making it harder for you to want to keep doing what you're doing. Yep. And you you, you got to do the right thing because you want to keep your job. Like I, I know Julian probably got a question for us, but one of the worst things that a player can be called is soft, right? It's the yeah. same thing as a coach. My mm-hmm. former players come back and watch practice and go, coach, you soft now. Yeah. <laughs> and I look at them and I'm like, I want to keep my job. <laughs> I had you, I cussed you out from the yeah. time you left the gym till you got home and then told your mom and daddy they didn't say anything. Now, if I say darn, yep. I might be in the principal's office. Man. No question. And the parents, so parents want to meet parents want to meet with you and the AD because they kidnapped them. Oh. I said, I was the one of the first things I said. I said, listen. If you guys try to make me meet with a parent because they cannot play, y'all might as well fire me because I'm probably gonna quit the next. Yeah, time. It's, it's it's so changed, man. It's changed, you know. And and this yeah. the kids have changed. The kids have changed. My kids from 05 come back and they come into the school. I'm not gonna say any names, but one you remember Jeffrey Crawley? Uh, 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 yeah, look, I see. You. Okay, yeah. <laughs> six five two thirty in high school. So now he's a grown man. So he's six five. 280, all solid muscle. He was coming through the door with one of my players who was 6'8 at the time. They bumped into each other. Crawley defensive, ready to knock this kid out. And the kid goes, I'm sorry, excuse me. Crawley <laughs> looked at me and said, who the hell is this? He said, excuse me to me. These ain't no Wakefield kids, coach. Man, listen. Things have changed, man. man. They really have? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, 
you know, guys, I, I've taken an hour and 45 minutes of your time. You guys, you guys got more? You guys want to wrap this up and do another one? Or what, what do you think? Uh, I'm probably going to have to go ahead. This one waited long enough for me to hey, come. Listen, to right there, hey, PBI right there calling for him. He going to PBI. <laughs> he got his own social media page, baby, because I'm always exactly. watching. Exactly. Hey, Joey. Well, yeah. Thank you yeah. for having us. Yeah, I, yeah I, man, we really man. appreciate it. I, I think that we didn't get to all the stuff that you wanted to get to. So if you wanted to do it again, absolutely. Yeah, cut, yeah. We had to cut Durham out because Durham get long winded. Yeah. Yeah, Dur yeah. <laughs> hey, fuck <laughs> all of y'all. That's how I feel. I ain't said on, shit. Man, record, man. Uh, man, man you guys all the bad language. Come on, man. I'm gonna oh, bleep you out. Hey, look, I. I Hey, I, got look, parental, I am who I am. Parental uh, guidance on my on my YouTube. Here's, here's the thing is, here's the, here's the thing is, you know what you guys say what you want to say, but I'm gonna just tell you this: the facts is, you know, you can't do what you want to do. The school is not supporting you. As coaches, you got problems. Yeah, this I'm is, not listening. My, is, my, my administration is great. I want to make sure I say that. Yeah, hey, me, me too. Support. Me too. Me too. Got my administration is amazing. <laughs> Nate Haley. <laughs> forget about what I said. Forget about what I said for the last two hours. My administration is great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, no, it's not the administration. The parents are getting at the administrators. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean everything's I mean, everything's based off of the parents' power and them yeah. suing the counties or whatever. That, that's where yeah, it comes. That's why we can't have older kids in the gym and stuff like that. Because if someone gets hurt, it's a liability issue. Yeah, yeah you can. C coaches, co coaches got to be politicians now. In the old days. You know, the old school coaches were different than the coaches are now. You guys got to be very political. You guys got to get along and got to keep your jobs. Otherwise, you can't help these kids. So, so, Tony, it's so funny you talk about old players coming back and talk about people being soft. I'll never forget coming back because, you know, I don't know if um, you guys knew that Coach A's went over to the girls' side for a little bit. Yeah. Yes. His daughter, his, ball. his daughter, Hannah, was really good. Yeah. I remember coming back and watching him do a practice <laughs> and thinking I'm going to see the same Coach Hayes, the <laughs> guy that was kicking the ball up into the, the rafters. And, and you ever go in Potomac, them lights that used to be out in the old gym wasn't on accident. It's because he kicked balls up there and they never replaced them light bulbs. So, and I'm, he's in there and somebody did something and he just was like super calm. And I remember I walked over to him. I said, hey, what happened to you, man? <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, he said. He said I was. He said I was a bad girls coach. He said I. Could, <laughs> after a while, I just. I just he, 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 he was. He, he did a good job. They just. He couldn't do. He yeah. couldn't be him. Yeah, and that's no, what it was. No. Yeah. yeah, it's a different. So. It's a different skill set, you know. Yeah. But anyway, guys, look. This this is a great panel. You guys are, you know, a one. You guys do a great job uh, with the X's and O's. Do a great job with your kids. Yeah, and your kids appreciate what you do. So I appreciate you guys doing this. You know, let's uh, maybe next month or, or so, let's, let's do it again and talk about some of the other issues that affect your job, you know? Yep. Good. Okay. Right. And, and, and next time, right. we'll, we'll put, we'll hey, put... Say what's we'll up, up with Dan right here. Say hey, what's what up, man? What's up, man? Oh, that's that's it. Like it. That's the Thank goat. you for what you did for the country, <laughs> man. That's the goat. Yeah, we My missed man. you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate y'all, fellas, man. Yes, sir. Y'all be good. Hey, guys. Thank you. Yes, Thanks again. Yes, sir. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, appreciate it, guys. Take care. All righty. All right, leave.